בשמחה. הרבה תודה לך על כל הסיקור שלך, שאני חושב באמת מקרב את הציבור הישראלי הרבה יותר כדי להבין מה קורה בצד השני, ותודה על ההרצאה המקיפה הזאת. תודה, תודה לכם, תודה. אוקיי, אני רוצה להגיד לכם עכשיו our uh, dear guest, uh, Professor uh, Kamal uh, Abdelmalek. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, for waiting. Uh, we had a show delay because of uh, some uh, changes in our uh, schedule. Uh, Professor uh, Abdelmalek uh, is speaking now from uh, the UAE, uh, but he is a visiting uh, scholar at uh, Harvard University. That's uh, what happens uh, during the corona. a virus uh, pandemic that you can uh, be a visiting scholar but uh, stay at your uh, home. Uh, he is also a chief editor of uh, Arabic and World uh, Literature uh, Journal, and he was probably the first uh, uh, Egyptian student in Israel at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem in 1979, right, Kamal? Yes, yes. Uh, so we are so, uh, so happy, we are so happy to to have you with us and uh, to speak with us about uh, the topic of uh, the representation of uh, Israel in Egyptian uh, travel uh, or Arab travel uh, literature, especially Egyptian, Egyptian one, I assume. And uh, the floor is yours. Okay, well, thank you very much for this uh, invitation and hello everyone. Let me start right away by telling you that this, uh, my presentation, first of all, can we, can we share, uh, do you see my, my uh, screen? Not yet, not yet. Uh, you have to uh, press on the share screen. All right. Uh, okay, uh, share the screen, okay. Um, okay, so this is the one, yes. Okay, do you, do you see now my screen? Yes, we see it. Okay, so... ...to project, uh, to write about the representation of Israel in Arabic literature in general. I have already uh, actually Uh, written a book about the representation of uh, the just uh, continue okay um Oh, okay, so let me uh, start. about about the Arab Israeli conflict in the uh, film um, uh, 2000 and uh, um, Then I have uh, 2000, and then I have another book, uh, or it's an anthology, Kuna uh, Fasrail, we have been to Israel, Rahalat Masriya, Egyptian trips uh, between 56 and 2008, and this is actually the basic uh, text for my presentation. And then, of course, I also tried my hand in writing a novel called Come With Me from Jerusalem, Uh, which I hope to see when they uh, translate it into uh, Hebrew. Uh, maybe I have uh, ambition to have it also as a film. Um, okay, so now uh, what I want to concentrate on is the Egyptians who have uh, lived for a short time in Israel, they wrote books in Arabic, presumably, uh, you know, meant to be for Egyptian eyes or Arab eyes. Uh, and some of these books, very few of them, actually, uh, I actually I use one only out of seven uh, translated into English, and that's the Ali Sayyid book. So I want to alert everybody to the importance of the first one, uh, first book, uh, travel account by Ibrahim Izzet, Kultuf Israel, I have been to Israel, and this is, uh, 
It was published in 1957, but the trip itself took place in uh, November of uh, not November, uh, February in uh, 1956. That's before the war, and it was remarkable in the sense that it's, it was the first time an Egyptian actually uh, visited Israel. Uh, it was also at the time when I mean, there was a lot of tension actually erupted in a, in a raging war in 56, as you remember. Uh, and that, I think, is an important uh, book, and I would like to actually see, see it translated into English and uh, perhaps Hebrew. And, and, and of, of course, I would like to draw your attention to the importance of it uh, for studying. Uh, the second one, after that, uh, we have to go all the way to the 1960s, almost like 40 years. Uh, Muhammad Mustafa Hakeda, Ayat of Israel. This is the way, or this is how I, Israel looked to me in 1995. Then uh, of Musa'ad, Mukhalis, awaiting the Messiah. Um, uh, then we had also the first uh, Egyptian ambassador to Israel, uh, Saad Murtada. Perhaps now to some of you, definitely go to uh, Shimon Shamir. Um, and uh, he wrote his Mudakirat, Mudakirat Awi Safir, Misri Fi Tel Aviv, My Mission in Israel. Come Sorry? On. Sorry, yeah. the, there is some echo in your voice. I don't know uh, if you can a little bit improve the sound. It's okay. easier to hear you. I don't know if it's possible. Okay, well, I'll try it. Okay. Is it better now? Mm, about not so much. Uh, <laughs> but, but maybe you can... Uh, maybe you... Has changed to speak. Okay. Can you... Can you, can you hear me now? Uh, it's not the best sound, but uh, if, it, if it... I mean, we can understand... It's not it, the best, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, so, I... Because I corrected it... Okay. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Is it better? Uh, no, it's about... Hello? Uh, but if... if, if okay. I, I wonder why uh, I have an echo. Uh, well, I guess because I'm in my empty room. <laughs> There's no in here. Okay. Um, I don't know what to do exactly. Is it, is it better now? Can you hear me? At least. No? Um, okay. So, what do you think we should, I should do? Um, All right. Um, maybe uh, talk a little bit slower. It will be easier to understand you when... Uh, uh, okay. So, um, I was talking about Saad Murtada. Can you hear me better? Um, the first uh, Israeli ambassador to, uh, I'm sorry, to, to the first Egyptian ambassador to Israel, uh, there must be some, yeah, some way to fix this. But unfortunately, I am at home and I'm, I don't have any, any kind of access to IT. Okay, let's, um, let's, let's, keep, uh, let's keep it like this. We'll, we'll do our efforts to understand you, and uh, it's a little bit, uh, the volume is not, it's, it's a little bit uh, with echo, but we will do our best to, to follow your uh, uh, presentation. Okay, so still it's there's an echo. Um, a bit. Okay, but the, the oh, okay, there's, there's audio, there's something called audio setting. If there's any way, okay. Um, all right, is this better now? I uh, yes, volume much is high. Much better. Much better, much better now. Better. Yes. Hello. Yes. 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 Better much now. Better. Oh, I see. I think that the okay, the volume. The okay. All right, I see that. Okay. Um, all right. So. All right. I was talking about Saad Murtada, the first Egyptian ambassador. This is better? You can hear me? Yeah, it's perfect. It's perfect. Okay. And, and, and he wrote uh, his uh, memoirs about uh, his mission in Israel, uh, 2008. 
then another ambassador called Rifat Al Ansari, uh, my story in Tel Aviv, and and then ending with the younger person uh, has nothing to do with uh, uh, you know being ambassador. Uh, his name is Mamdouh Sakr. Actually, he was an uh, British uh, Egyptian, and um, and and he wrote, you know, from Cairo to Tel Aviv. Um, so I looked at uh, these uh, uh, seven uh, books, and uh, I have some okay, some comments to make, and then at the end we can. Uh, all right, we can, uh, we can discuss these points. Um, we may add, if you like, also Sana Hassan, uh, but that's, that's in English, the enemy in the promised land, uh, an Egyptian woman's journey into Israel. Um, so if we are to look at the, uh, how the image, what is the other exactly in, uh, in Arab cultural prism? the other, the stranger, the outsider, the foreign, you will find the following. Um, Al-Gharib, and it's derived from words like Al-Gharb, al gurub al gurba Al-Gharaba. And these would invoke words like the West, or it would invoke sunset, or diaspora, or strangeness. Uh, the Arabic words also uh, related to the outsider is Ajnabi. It's a legal term, actually, legal in terms of, uh, you know, modern day state system, Ajnabi, uh, foreigner. And, uh, and then, then other words like Khariji. And if you remember, if uh, you're familiar with this uh, term in Islam, Kharijites, the Khawarij. And then Dakhil, you know that word. Um, it's an intruder. And then Zanim uh, is an illegitimate. Uh, or a bastard, and uh, uh, temporary or uh, transient. So this is a concept of what is uh, an outsider. If we are to meditate a little bit on the word normalization, which is, uh, I'm actually, uh, I'd like us to think a little bit about this. It's called tatbir in Arabic, from tabiri, which is normal or natural. And, and let us think about this in terms of images that I, I'm putting on the screen. If we are, it seems to me that the tabiri, that which is natural, is usually that which is in its natural location. A thing that is natural is a thing that is in its natural expected location. Therefore, the soil in the land is natural because this is what we would expect it. If part of that soil is elsewhere, out of its natural location, it becomes dirt, as you know. So I'm quoting here Mary Douglas, that says that dirt is matter out of place, or dirt soil is matter out of place. Let us think about also this image, that the hair that we see on this, uh, on this lady is, uh, it looks beautiful. It is in its natural place, it is, um, you know, coming out of a human head. If the same or part of it is in the sink, you would agree with me that is not beautiful. All right? I don't think that we would have disagreements about that. Let's contemplate other things. The other game. If we were to um, imagine our world, let us say specifically, we Arabs and Jews expect or think of our words in terms of a center. Where do you think we would find ourselves in relation to the other? I think it would be natural. I'm going to go faster a little bit. 
it would be natural to think that we are in the center, right? Marquez. So we will be inside and the outsider, as the term indicates, would be outside that center. So inside is the center or centric versus the outside, which is eccentric. And of course, we know English. Uh, we would immediately recognize the word eccentric, which is outside the center. The same المركز والهامش that's in Arabic داخل الخارج and القريب الغريب so let us think about the word in other terms and uh, for example the pyramid oh, yeah now forgive me because as an Egyptian that's the way I look at the word uh, the pyramid, the top and the base. I'm not sure that this is particularly, it's better, but it's uh, still, you think of the self as the top uh, or the tip, and then the others as, as the base. Let us think about the arborescent way of relating to the other. We have a, a tree. And if we think of the word as a tree, our place, uh, as being in the center, we would be the actual uh, root and the other would be the branches. It's still better than the rest of forms because it is organic. There is an organic unity between the root and the branches, as you can see. All right. And so let me uh, just say a few things about the uh, some of these uh, books that I'm uh, presenting today. The first one is the Ibrahim Izzat, Kuntu uh, Israel, I have been to Israel. As I said, this is what the archives is saying about him. Egyptian newsman tours Israel, uh, Egyptian reporter, uh, Ibrahim Izzat, 23, who spent 12 days touring Israel as a guest of the Israeli government, April 26 to May 6, 56. Uh, see how significant this, uh, this uh, date is, and um, and he wrote about uh, you know he wrote in his uh, Cairo magazine called Rosal Youssef on May 28th that the Israeli government uh, minister Moshe Sharet, uh, foreign minister Moshe Sharet met him and told them uh, Israel and then quotation was ready to accept a limited number of Arab refugees. End of quotation, another one, those who have families in Israel and was also ready to pay indem indemnities to the rest of the refugee Arabs in case they settle in the Arab states. This is, and then the rest are just like where to find this exactly. He also, uh, as that had also revealed his Israeli, in his Israeli tour, um, he had reported an interview with Israeli Premier uh, uh, David Ben-Gurion in which he was told that when you go to Egypt and if you meet Egyptian President uh, Nasser, tell him that I am ready to meet him anytime, any place he chooses to discuss any problem he wants, refugees, borders, uh, political, economic or military questions. I am ready to meet him even in Cairo. Um, I think these, these are, uh, uh, it is actually quite remarkable to read about all of these details uh, in as early as 1956. Um, and throughout the, the book, you would find that there is a spirit of, uh, yes, we do have a problem with, uh, with Israel, and the, uh, the consequences of its creation, um, primarily, I'm talking about Egyptians, uh, primarily the uh, refugees, uh, but uh, you could see that there was real interest in knowing who the Israelis were, what kind of culture they have. He met with, um, with uh, the Gutain, uh, the famous Israeli uh, scholar, 
um, uh, and he met also with uh, Navon, uh, the late uh, president, and uh, and he met also with the Gali Adin to talk about uh, about actually Egyptian uh, monuments and archaeology and so on. So. Um, I'm gonna just like uh, speed up a little bit. I have other details in here about this. And I'll go to Ali Salim, an Egyptian uh, playwright. Uh, I think known to some of you, maybe even personally, late of course, uh, Ali Salim. Uh, he wrote a book called A Trip to Israel. And I think it was translated into English later. I'm not sure that it was translated into Hebrew, maybe. Um, and yes, yeah, okay. Yes, and, it was uh, translated. Yes, yes, okay. And um, uh, and Salim has been one of the strongest supporters of normalization with Israel. And, uh, and, and of course he suffered as a consequence. He was actually expelled uh, temporarily from the uh, writers union, but he uh, sued them and he won the case. Um, and, and at the very end, he was defending this, um, whole uh, direction in normalizing re relations with Israel. And, uh, and, and, and then he, he said that he went there to answer two questions. Who are these people, meaning the Israelis, and what are they doing? And then he goes on to say, I looked at the Oslo Agreement as a unique moment in history. It is a moment for the self to recognize the other his own language, you know. I am here, I exist, and you are here, you exist. Life is my right to enjoy, and your life uh, also your right to enjoy. All right, um, and he went on to say a few things about the, the Arabs in Israel. He said that the government of Israel uh, does not always represent the Israeli people. I don't know if you guys would <laughs> would agree with him, <laughs> but maybe some of you <laughs> seeing that in the news that um, you know you have all of these debates, uh, 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 political debates. Uh, perhaps he is right in saying that. He also tries to uh, push people to accept the Israeli reality, especially since the Egyptian state has a uh, an embassy. Uh, that, I mean, has allowed the Israelis or accepted the Israelis to have an embassy in Cairo, and Egypt has now an ambassador in Israel. Then we, we go on to Murtada, Saad Murtada, the first e Egyptian ambassador to Israel, and, uh, and uh, uh, it's as early as uh, on February 24th, 1980, Saad Murtada arrives in Tel Aviv as the first Egyptian ambassador to Israel. I must put a note here, a personal note. I was in Israel at the time. I was already in Jerusalem as a student when Saad Murtada actually started. In fact, I arrived in Jerusalem in July 1979. I stayed for 12 months, left also July 1980, okay? So uh, Murtada said that he was uh, warmly welcomed by Israelis. Uh, he received uh, invitations from all uh, officials, uh, from uh, people, newspaper people. Uh, he went to the Knesset, he met with leaders of Israel. Uh, and, and he says that he, the distinctive characteristics of the Israeli people uh, um, they are vibrant and energetic with the ability to imagine and innovate. They are also flexible and uh, they adapt quickly to new circumstances. And those who think about it do not adhere to the theories and the texts they have studied in books, but rather use their minds and imagination. They are not bookish people, but they are people who are have the ability to read, meditate, uh, and 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 uh, come up with uh, something new. Kamal, uh, I just uh, said that uh, we have about uh, five minutes. 
Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, just an uh, interesting question that uh, the book of, uh, of Saad Murtada was published uh, 80, uh, 28 years following his uh, mission. Yes, yeah. I, uh, I wonder why, but uh, maybe he had to get some permission to uh, publish some of the details in it. The same actually applies to uh, another guy called Al Ansari, who was also an ambassador. Okay, so I have only five minutes. Uh, let me just uh, then jump. I go you know, uh, uh, on, and then now I have some of these concluding remarks that the, uh, the paper actually discusses these, uh, these memoirs and, uh, and uh, presents the reader with a mixed montage of opinions and impressions culled from uh, writers, uh, such literatures, diplomats, and intellectuals, and shedding light on Egypt's dramatic uh, uh, change from being an arch uh, enemy of Israel to becoming a peace uh, partner. Let me uh, conclude by my own kind of uh, question. I always uh, think that we should uh, leave you with a question rather than a conclusive uh, end. So we are accustomed to thinking that in any given shape, there is only one center, one focus, one first principle. Let this be an opportunity for us as Arabs and Jews to contemplate something um, fresh. And that is maybe there are, sent, yeah, there, are, there are shapes that are not necessarily, you know, having one center. Maybe we should, con con you, know, con you know, meditate on this shape of the ellipse as one that has two centers. And without the one, the other cannot actually uh, be there. Uh, both centers would need each other. And uh, the question is, uh, this is the question that I put for you, but I already solved it. If there's any geometric shape that has two centers. And then the other question I'm gonna leave you with is that, can we imagine the other as uh, also another center, not only ourselves as center. Can we, uh, can we think of the other, our others as, as, as whatever they write, their narrative about the history of our own common uh, conflict is also a master narrative. It's not like our own master narrative in comparison to the uh, the other, the counter narrative, but rather as two masters narratives that we should uh, put into consideration. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much, uh, uh, Kamal. It was a real pleasure to have you with us from uh, Russell Chaim UAE, and you made our uh, conference an international one. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for having me. So, uh, we hope to see you uh, also in person uh, in, uh, in the near future. Uriya, we're in the end of the month of the year. Yes, and we'll return to the 